hello everybody. I hope everybody's in good health and everybody is in a safe place and everybody's happy. Um, today's conversation is a really a special one. I'm quite excited about it. Uh, it is about the building blocks of our ecosystem. Uh, without individuals uh, like the people I'm gonna be talking to today, our ecosystem does not exist. Uh, so I'm very excited to basically talk to everybody uh, on this call. Um, I'm a fan of many of you. I've been following your work for quite some time. It's been amazing seeing you all grow and evolve into the artist that you are. And I'm excited to see what the future is going to hold for you. Uh, here in Abu Dhabi, uh, we are trying to create a, a, a ecosystem and opportunity for artists from all over to basically feel that their, their inspiration, uh, that they can aspire to become artists that can have their artworks throughout society, throughout community. Uh, we feel specifically here in Abu Dhabi is that art is, should be a part of our cultural DNA. It should be a part of us. It's, it makes us, in my opinion, it makes us human. Uh, it is the earliest form of communication. And I think communication is key in not just this time, but in all times. And I think art is what really creates communication without a specific language. And that's the beauty of art. Um, so without further ado, I want to introduce you, ladies and gentlemen, if you allow me. Um, Afraf Bahri, Nujum Al Ghanim, Tarak Al Hussein, Sheikh Al Mazrui, Al Mazrui, Farah Al Qasmi, Ramin, and Rukni Hazarda, and Hisam Rahmani, Rahmanian, and Muhammad Khazm. Um, many of you I've met before, whether I've seen you in Abu Dhabi Art or I've visited some of your galleries, and like I said, it's been, it really has been inspirational seeing you guys uh, grow. It's been very, very special. And you know, when, uh, when we talked about our cultural strategy, and I'm just trying to basically put everything together before I hear from you, it, it was all about, it's not about building the greatest and the most beautiful museums. It's not just about that. It's not about uh, you know, bringing musicians and having them uh, set up shop in Abu Dhabi. It's a nice part of it. These are all nice parts. But again, if it's not built from the ground up, if it's not a tree, if it's not a seed that starts from the ground and then flourishes into this beautiful tree, we're not going anywhere. And I think that was a huge part of our strategy. And how do we encompass and how do we harness this fantastic talent that we have? And this talent that we have is not just a local talent. It's not just a talent here in Abu Dhabi or in the UAE. It's, a, it's an international talent. And many of you on this call have taken it upon yourselves to basically push yourselves to a limit to basically not... Uh, label yourself as an Emirati artist, but to label yourself as an artist. And I think that's very, very special. And uh, if, it's, if there's one thing that I take with me all the time back to my office and I, and I talk to our colleagues, it is a reminder of what you as artists do. Uh, it is how you push yourselves on a daily basis, um, how you continue to, to break barriers, to break walls, uh, sometimes with help, sometimes without help. So. Uh, uh, there's a lot of credit that has to be given to you. So, again, uh, without further ado, we'll start our conversation. مثل ما قلنا يا إخوان ويا خوات نحنا بعنا نتخيل نحنا قاعدين في جلسة في يا أما بيت محمد خازم أو بيت شيخة ويالسين وقاعد نتعشى ما عرف نو بيسوي العشاء اليوم يمكن طارق يمكن فرح ونبغى نتكلم عن على أي شيء يعني this is literally a conversation about everything uh, about anything. Uh, but I want to, and from my perspective, uh, I would want to hear what you're going through during this time. How are you seeing the opportunities? Uh, are they closing in? Are they opening up? Uh, how do you see the ecosystem that's here in the UAE and specifically Abu Dhabi? Uh, how do you see uh, the new centers that have come up over the last several years here in Abu Dhabi, whether it is the, 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 uh, the re-evolution of the cultural foundation, Manarat Saadiyat, uh, Berkeley School of Music, and, and the list goes on. Uh, how that's reflected on you and vice versa, uh, and the opportunities that you can also give to new and upcoming uh, artists. Um, I've always said your role is a lot more than an artist uh, because you are not just an artist, but you're an educator. You are a, a, a changer of a perception. You are, of course, a, 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 a creator of a thought. You're an inspirer. So you play a massive role in our society, and I thank you for that. Okay, so if you allow me, guys, 
I can jump in or you can just jump in and say anything. Like I said, cut me off. If there's anything anybody wants to say, if anybody wants to start with their own introduction, we're all ears. But I'm sure many of you speak a lot better than I can, so. Sheikha, Tarak, Mohammed. I mean, so, maybe, Farah, I, maybe a good place to start. I think like what's what's interesting to me is that I, I feel like since starting to work um, as an artist in the Emirates and beyond, there are so many conversations around um, the ecosystem and how it could possibly support artists. And I think that there's something remarkable about that in itself because I live in New York now and nobody ever asks me what I think about the, the ecosystem in New York or how you know, local institutions could be better at supporting artists. So while I do have, you know, particular thoughts about um, where support comes from and how it, like, uh, in the Emirates, it's, it's, it's different because I think it's mostly top down as opposed to other places where there's a lot more sort of grassroots effort that comes from, uh, you know, artists mobilizing um, around each other and, and their needs. I do think that there is something particularly important and specific to the Emirates about checking in with people and asking um, because that's not something that's, that's you know, um, that happens in other places. But I don't know if any of you have had a similar experience where if, if, if you feel like you, you're often um, asked to sort of reflect on this. Yeah, I mean, th thank you for that, Farah. I mean, you're absolutely right. And I think um, we're not afraid to put our hand up and say, you know, we want to, we, we need help. You know, and, and the help starts from, from the artists themselves. Uh, you know, we're not, you can't expect, and we don't want to expect ourselves basically making decisions on this ecosystem, this artistic ecosystem system sitting from an office. It basically, like you said, needs to start from the voice of the artists. This needs to start from the thought of the artists and what they have seen abroad, what they have seen nationally, what they can basically, we're, we're almost on a daily basis, basic, basis evolving this. And what we do today will benefit what the artists of the future and vice versa. And it's gonna keep, and it's gonna keep evolving in that front. Uh, so, you know, we are trying to basically bring everything together to the middle. Like you said, in one side, the government has made a very clear and constant decision to basically, uh, to invest in culture and all aspects in culture. And a huge part of this investment is within our artists. Uh, our artists that are resident artists, Emirati artists, uh, we all see them as, as home artists. Uh, how we make Abu Dhabi a home for artists from all over the world, where they can come and set up shop in Abu Dhabi and we can, we can, we can uh, put and give them studios and offer them studios and give them artists and residencies and give them opportunities maybe that they're maybe not getting somewhere else. Uh, and like you said, you know, we have, there has been many institutions that have done scholarships and have basically invested in artists and we just want to continue to grow that. So, anybody has any comment on in that regard? So, so, I want just to mention that also since the uh, uh, 70s, um, the UAE government also and the Minister of the Culture, they have been uh, supporting uh, the, the artists, not only art uh, artists, also they support, support uh, everyone in different fields to, to be abroad, to study art. And the contribution of the artists also when they came back, they founded the, the Emirates Fine Arts Society. That was great platforms for everyone. And um, so this is the way how we started our contributions uh, with, with, the, with the governments. Uh, today also we have a lot of institutions, a lot of opportunity for the young artists, also a lot of events like a biennials, like a solo exhibition beside of the commissions of, of the world. So, uh, I think this is very, very important that uh, still now, even we are in, 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 in this uh, case, which we have it facing today with the 19 COVID. And uh, I think it's, it didn't really uh, affect me as an artist because I never kept this gap between my ideas and, uh, and my practice in, this, uh, in the studio. It was, issue uh, in first month when we were working three hours because that three hours we were using for different purpose but uh, now in these days i think everything's opened again and uh, we're still working uh, with some commissions uh, for the some projects uh, 
and uh, many of the galleries they, they they open it again and we still receiving the local audience uh, which in the, uh, unfortunately we missed uh, the international uh, audience to attend attend the show and uh, i am saying thank you to all of this institution which uh, they kept uh, the shows and the exhibition online um, to be visible for everyone uh, and I know that distance, that gap, is, it's still it's affecting to see the world physically and for the, everyone to, to, to come and see the show. So uh, I think beside of that, uh, still the old, many of the institutions, they, they kept uh, uh, to trying to support uh, the, the artists and we received a lot of uh, calls and uh, emails from the institution, whatever, private or the central government, like a ministry of, of, of uh, uh, culture in the UAE. Well, uh, I would like to add something. Um, you know, you talked about the initiatives in- I want to say, Najum, how are you? Hello, hello. Hello, how are you? Hello, how are you? How are you? How are you? How are you? Alhamdulillah. Allah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, you were talking about the initiatives uh, in, in Abu Dhabi and other, you know, Emirates and uh, how uh, art is becoming very essential in our society and how it can be, um, you know, uh, a mean of education, of awareness, of uh, cultural uh, change and um, you know, like um, uh, entertainment and uh, whatever, every, over every other possibility. Uh, but I think um, we have to make sure also that um, there are differences in, in, uh, in, the, in the cultural level and the educational level and the societal level in our society, within our society. And we still need more awareness, more, you know, more initiatives to raise the awareness of culture. I mean, we've seen uh, during the last years that, uh, or in fact, we've witnessed that the art is becoming the pampered child uh, amongst all other forms of, of, of arts. Uh, however, uh, there is a, a big fuss and big, um, you know, like, uh, um, it is, you know, when, whenever there is an opening, whenever there is, uh, you know, a, a, an initiative, uh, we will see that everyone is very um, uh, excited about it, but uh, after a couple of days, things go to silence, to quietness. This is because I, I think people still think art is, you know, there is a distance between them and art. I still think that, uh, you know, uh, art is a foreign thing to them. And we need, we need to create uh, a, probably a global project or a national project first that will uh, bring, uh, everyone together and you know it will be a project that is going to uh, bring love to art and to connect our our culture uh, with you know with the people back with the people and uh, make make art as you know uh, part of their daily life no i think it's the kalamist najum you're absolutely right. And I think uh, we have to look at, you know, Farah said something about being grassroots. Uh, we're evolving very, very, very quickly. And I think we're almost doing a full, uh, a full uh, 180. Uh, you know, as uh, Akhoi Mohammed said, uh, in the 70s and the 60s, really the UAE was a very artistic hub. Whether it was with music or art or we had our artisanal works, it was really a, a flourishing, beautiful, organic ecosystem. Then it went kind of quiet for a little while. I mean, uh, I mean, we all went to school here, too, you know, so 20 years ago, 25 years ago, I remember being in school, you know, the, the teaching of art was very mediocre. 
And if you even thought about telling your teacher, I want to be an artist or I want to be a musician, it was kind of frowned upon. Now, on the contrary, we've invested heavily in art and music and theater in our schools. Because like you said, Nujum, it, it is the new norm. And we believe that artists have massive, could have massive careers. Uh, and it's, it's, it, whether it is financial, whether it is uh, from a persona perspective, but it is no longer being an artist is almost like a side job. You could be a, 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 a very reputable artist, whether it's locally or internationally, and it is something to be taken seriously. Uh, so yes, you know, we need to make sure that these things are set up in the right place, uh, that schools and, uh, and centers see this as what it's, what it's all about, uh, to make sure that the opportunities are for artists. You know, whether it is as Muhammad and you said, Nujum, you know, we have enough galleries, uh, we have enough spaces that basically can showcase these works. And because that will create the sort of passion from artists to work extremely hard to get to that. And you know, things that we have seen in a very short period of time with initiatives that we've done in Abu Dhabi Art or some of the commissions work that we've done with Emirati artists and also resident artists have really gone a long way in only in the last five years. So uh, it is an exciting time. And like I said, we are evolving very quickly, uh, but with this evolution, this voice is what's important. And everything that you're going to be saying today is, is critical for us to, to evolve in the right manner. If you allow me, uh, if I just want to jump in with some questions, uh, you know, because we know we've heard about, you know, how, what are we facing today? And we've heard about, uh, you know, if, if, has COVID affected or not affected you? Uh, has your, have you rethought or reevaluate any of your projects during this pandemic or your practices? So uh, let me jump into some of the people we haven't talked to. So, um, uh, Mohammed Khazam, to, let's go to, uh, uh, to Afra. Afra, you know, how are you revisiting your practice during this time? And have, has anything changed during this pandemic? I mean, absolutely. Um, the, I, because my work deals a lot with time and I used to constantly in my studio try to slow down time because I felt like we're always moving too fast. Um, I yearned for the times when uh, moments felt slower. We've experienced things for longer time. Um, it's something that I, I, I talk about a lot, but um, I think, yeah, um, given this challenge, uh, in some ways, uh, it is, we're granted extra time. We're granted more uh, studio time. I'm fortunate enough because I have my own studio, so, um, I've been working there and um, yeah, the, the, what shifted in, in how I work is that I have more time to work right now. But at the same time, in terms of practice, I'm looking more at um, the pace of time right now. It's like I'm granted this wish that I've always run after, but um, it, it's also taking me to um, a time where the essence um, of, of um, the daily routine felt like life in the 90s, for example, where we didn't have like cinemas and malls and like uh, t 10 or 20 events to be at or gallery openings or <laughs> five other dinners at the same day. Um, I think that it allowed me, to, it, it just instantly took me back to that time, um, like the 90s, where I would sit down. Um, I was also fortunate that uh, I had a mother who was very creative, so she taught me how to sew, she taught me how to crochet, and I found myself going back to those processes. And so in terms of my practice, yeah, and specifically, I've been um, working on these type of processes that you know, it requires, they're habitual, and at the same time, they require more um, focus that, honestly, I was, I was thinking about it the other day, I was crocheting, and I'm like, I don't think I would have the patience if it was a normal day or whatever, the normal past that, <laughs> that we lived in like three months ago. So yeah, I mean, I think it's, there's definitely, um, it definitely affects the way we work. But it also, I think, is a very important time for artists to stop and reflect because we were um, constantly um, working towards whether it's exhibitions or participations. I also teach, so that also takes a lot of, um, uh, of my time. Uh, and I feel like, and a lot of, 
of artist friends يعني, feel the same way and they have time to actually look back and process what their practice has been about and process. So the work had يعني, started to become um, or they started to have more time to research, more time to read, more time to you know, reflect. A lot of people are writing. Um, and I think, yeah, I think it's interesting to me. I feel like there's going to be an abundance of material whenever this is over or Good. whatever so, so, it means for it to be over. يعني. You have taken uh, advantage, basically, the opportunity and, and, and you feel that there's a lot of inspiration that you've gotten from it. Yeah. So I think this is a, a positive thing. Uh, Rockney, Ramin, and Hissam. First yeah. of all, if, if you guys don't know these guys, they're the coolest guys I've met in a long time. I, I remember going to uh, Abu Dhabi Art uh, several years ago, and they had an, they had, uh, they had an amazing exhibition uh, or a commission work that they did. And this was entering these rooms, and each room had a different a different life attached to it. It was amazing. Uh, each room gave me goosebumps. Uh, uh, gave me just gave me different thoughts. It was fantastic. It was the first time I ever was engaged in something like this, where pretty much the entire room, top to bottom, uh, had a, a, a different feel to it. So, how are you guys doing? Very good. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Actually, I wanted to uh, we wanted to actually respond. Just step a little bit back to the uh, point that actually Farah brought up. Um, about the grassroots, because also because uh, Mohammed and uh, Nujum also spoke after that, and they're the two great examples of what um, how they actually um, you know came up to be an artist and how they practiced, you know. Because when we moved to Dubai about eleven years ago, the Flying House was um, it was a great example for us, you know. It was very heartwarming and. It was a relief to see uh, that there is a group of artists working together and they're, uh, you know, they embrace other artists also into their environment. And um, um, which I think is a very important characteristic. Um, and, uh, you know, to also stay faithful uh, to each other, you know, to uh, have care and love for each other as uh, to be in that community that they create they which is also a bit um almost it was self uh, sustained it was uh you know it was um more of a um, it has a self didactism it, yeah they had yeah. self didactism they, there was a lot of flexibilities and um um, it was a, a local movement which come from, uh, you know, which uh, get to be become, become universal, universal, you know, it's the uh, uh, best example of that thing, you know, which there is a, a crowd that individual artists get together and, you know, uh, they make, make a, a space, alternative space, which is, a, is an exemplary in in, in the, the UAE, region, in the region, and, and in the world. world. I don't yeah. know how many of that examples of artists practicing together, how many we have in the world. I mean, it was, it, it was, I think it was very unique and, uh, it's very rooted to the, and, and it was very country. rooted to here. And so it was very heartwarming for us to, you know, to give us the courage and to give us the, um, uh, confidence to be able to actually work and live together because and 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 this is why because we know each other for over 25 years we've been in dubai for 11 years but our practice actually flourished in the uae and um um so yeah the, the uae in, makes us you know be affirmative about everything like a, like its soul you know the soul of the uae is a affirmative soul and it's about making it, doing things. Be positive, look to the future. Yeah. And um, so when they also, now to your second question, now when the pandemic happened, uh, we, we didn't really give up, but we tried to actually look, I mean, do think of it in a couple of ways. One, to reduce costs for ourselves, uh, to prevent also, because I mean, I think most of the artists 
some have galleries, some are lucky to have galleries, some are, don't have galleries. There is, you know, kind of, let's, you know, we can call them freelancers. And um, so we had to kind of prevent uh, further damages. And so what we kind of came up to do, we had like a storage in um, Alcos, we had to, you know, return that. Or we kind of reduced the entire, um, our house studio, home studio to one table, basically. And uh, we started actually kind of living and so kind of surround ourselves, you know, with books and artworks uh, by, you know, other artists. And, you know, we are subscribed to the national newspaper, so we would receive it on a daily basis. And so some works actually came out of that. We painted on uh, paper, dining table, plates, and we cooked, we ate, everything was happening literally in that one room. So basically, and on that one table. And so basically our four bedroom house and the living room and studio rooms and all of these, they were kind of shut down during this whole time um, to save energy and to also to be able to focus on what we are doing. So anxieties and all these things that usually you know come to uh, come during this time attack artists you know they don't they don't come and attack us so at one point uh, we looked around us and we kind of uh, it was kind of everything was blurred in a sense that whether we were eating or painting on tables or plates and uh, and that kind of um, that was that's been our activities for the past three four months of the COVID nineteen. Everything was reduced into one plate or, or one table, basically. I mean that, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. And I think uh, similar to, to Afra, I think taking the opportunity at hand and, and making it work, and uh, you know, hopefully when things do open up in a much larger scale and you know, the exhibitions open up and you have people coming from all over and the galleries open up, you know, I think you'll be on the ground running. Um, just a question pops into my head. Obviously you've all been working during this time and there has been a lot of talk about virtual exhibitions uh, and, and virtual galleries. Uh, do you see this as a, a thing of the future and do you see this, is this gonna affect the way you, uh, you practice your art form? Do you see it as a bigger opportunity? I mean, do you see things like the conventional exhibitions that are a thing of the past? What's your views? And anybody can jump in at any time. Farah, Tarak. I mean, I, okay, I, can, I know like from a teaching perspective already, we've had to deal with challenges mm -hmm. with things being online. Um, I think, sure, I think the art world might move to having more access online, which I think would be a benefit, but I think we're missing the in-person uh, dialogue that, that happens. There's a distance between being online and being in person that I think I miss, but I think it offers, there's problems and benefits from every situation. I think being online, it gives, offers a greater access for the work for everyone to see it. So, uh, like, uh, like was saying, there's always like two sides. It could be sometimes overwhelming. I mean, uh, I teach uh, just like Afra and Mahara, and you know, teaching something that is practice based and trying to give feedback and get immediate response. It's it's a bit challenging, uh, but we just have to uh, kind of adapt uh, with this current change. Uh, but what I've noticed that. Uh, students started to look around their household in a very different eye. So things that they've never thought of, uh, you know, as a medium became a tool, became a medium to kind of express. Um, but it's, it's, it's quite challenging uh, and, as I mentioned earlier, overwhelming. Um, I would like to add another point uh, to your previous question, um, which is, you know, efforts and ecosystem from both uh, whether it's from the institution or from the artist, I think honestly, it requires an equal effort and equal collaboration. So instead of like pinpointing fingers and saying like institutions and museums, and I think artists have to put an equal effort um, and not just like sit back and wait for the efforts to come and knock their doors. 
Um, and yeah, I think there's some sort of a partnership that sh should take place. Uh, I mean, thank you that, for that, Sheikha, because I think when we initially started talking, one of the first things I said is education is key here. And if you really want to build something from the ground up, it needs to start at the, at the, at the, at the youngest level and then basically harness its way up to, uh, to, uh, to where we are today. You know, you, yourself, uh, Tarak, uh, uh, Afra, you're all basically, uh, you know, uh, practicing and curating and teaching. You're both professors, you and Tarak. And I think that's something that, uh, that's it's very, very special because you're, you're taking, and also Farah, you're taking your 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 art form and you're basically broadcasting to a, to a to an audience that is that wants to have that same potential and wants to learn from it uh, that's i think is the most special thing that any of us as artists can do now with things ever evolving very very quickly here in the ue and even internationally uh, whether it's with museums or institutions they're all redefining their their own rules and their own practices uh, you know like you said, Tarek, many of them are working online right now. Many of them are substituting uh, physical interactions. Uh, so you know, during this period, and I think even moving forward, I want to discuss where you see your roles as artists with such institutions and your ideas and your opinions about the way forward for institutions in Abu Dhabi or in the UAE. So just to keep the flow going with you, Sheikh and Tarek, you know, basically uh, uh, professors, um, what do you see as your roles within your institutions? How, that's, how is that evolving? How is that changing? Uh, my journey for my uh, postgraduate uh, degree was uh, very specific. Uh, I owe it to Sharjah, to be honest, and of course the Emirates. Um, I taught at the University of Sharjah College of Fine Arts uh, when I was doing my BFA. And I felt like it was kind of my duty, my role to further my education and give back. Uh, there's something about the academia that I truly enjoyed. Uh, it's, it's a win-win situation, you know, you're in, in among uh, students and they're constantly inspiring you and, and, and they feed your, you know, your hunger as, a, as an artist. So um, yes, I did want to grow as an artist by pursuing my degree, but I also wanted to come back and that was like a, a determined uh, decision I made. And um, I came back and I've been teaching at the College of Fine Arts, University of Sharjah for seven years. And it has been extremely fruitful. Um, it kept my practice going and students uh, at a very younger age uh, kept challenging me as an artist. So um, that's what I meant when I said it's kind of also the artist's role to, to be a part in that uh, ecosystem. Um, I've been teaching here 22 years and I've seen first at American University of Sharjah for 15 years and, and now at New York University for the last seven and I've seen a great change and I feel like with time because I've been given a lot in this country that I feel more commit not obligated to be more candid more direct with students and things and manage expectations is one thing I have many students still are in school and they'll say like, I want to be in the Guggenheim, I want to be in this and that. And I, like, I want to, it's great that so many opportunities are offered here, but I also want to, you know, manage expectations where in the past I would stay quiet, but I think now I'm more confident and in, in, in telling them that like things take time, it takes patience, you know, and it doesn't happen for everyone, absolutely. Um, and that not to take something like that for granted and not even to expect it. And it's actually not that, it's not the main drive that one should have, like one shouldn't have the goal of being an artist or making art to be in a museum. It's about a desire. And I think students can, that can be great, I think, because of so much talk about like things that are going on, being in the gallery and things. It took many years. And I think going back to online, now there's an access to art and, and having your work shown it's much greater than I was a student. I mean, there was no internet till I came here, like in the late, uh, early, mid nineties, actually. So I think my role, I think now is to, uh, as an uh, educator is somehow to be more direct with the students, I would say. Uh, I'm excited to see things uh, happening like at New York University, we're, we're opening up a, 
uh, MFA, a Master's of Fine Arts degree. It's the first one in the region. And um, we've been, I was talking about that a lot at American University of Sharjah. We finally opened it up here. And I think that's a step forward. I think it allows people from the region to continue their education. Absolutely. No, I think uh, Tarak, uh, you're absolutely right. You know, in our growth, you know, we need to be patient. And I think artists need to understand that there's going to have to be a time of struggle. And I think we have beautiful examples just here in, in this phone call, you know, uh, you know, with Hamid Khazam and, and Nujum, you know, you know, in the past when there was an internet and there wasn't these vast opportunities, they really had to struggle and they had to push and they're fantastic examples. We have examples like uh, Farah Al-Qasmi, you know, that is basically making things happen, not here, making things happen in New York. You know, I was uh, one of the biggest uh, negatives of COVID is that I was hoping that I would be in New York this summer walking around seeing Farah's uh, work on the bus shelters. I mean, I've been seeing it on the net. It's really, really cool. It's interesting. It's amazing. It's amazing how she has, uh, you know, brought in a different view of our culture. That's the way I perceive it in a very urban, uh, urban landscape. It's, 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 it's just fantastic. And I think that's her just like Mohammed and just like Najum have taken the effort on themselves and have not relied on anybody. And I think Tarek, as you rightfully said, artists today have to understand there's, there's only so much you can get. And there's only so much you got. And there's, there is always so much that you have to do. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm very glad that basically that's being a, uh, that's a, that's a major input that you're putting within your uh, educational system. Um, Going back to Farah, like I said, you know, I was excited to be in New York. I know you're in New York, New York, New York right now, and there has been a lot of things happening, uh, whether it's been the quarantine of COVID or, or the situation right now with some of the, uh, the protests. Um, and I'm sure that's kept you, that's kept you at home um, and obviously glued to a, to a screen like all of us have been glued to a screen over the last several months. I want to ask you, Farah, and then of course then to Afra, but how do you feel about the digital presence and the role of the internet um, for the arts? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think it's I don't think it's a substitute for face-to-face -face presence. And I think that Sheikha sort of highlights some of the issues, like even when you're just trying to to make things or um, you know have a studio presence, it, it's really hard and, and, and irreplaceable. Um, but I think I also, I wanted to go back to the last point that uh, people were making. And, and I, I keep thinking in this conversation about the role of the artist. Um, and, and I keep thinking about like what I thought art was at one point. And I, I'm, I'm a teacher as well. Um, I taught at Kaliata Tafnia in the Emirates for a couple of years. And then I've been teaching in different uh, institutions in the US for about three years. And the one thing that I keep holding on to is that even though we sort of have this idea that artists are these like social recluses who you know live in a studio and like I don't know paint get their paint all over the walls um, for me what I'm, I'm excited because some of the artists that I know and admire are, are the most civically and socially engaged people that I've ever met and are very much interested in becoming sort of like filters or witnesses of the worlds around them um, and you know like Farah was one of the first um, locally based artists that I came to know when I moved back to the UAE and his work has been really influential to me, um, you know, similarly to Rakhni Rahman and Hassam. Um, and I keep thinking about also the power of community and I think it would be, I think it's important to also mention that, um, you know, some of the opportunities around community that have been made available to us. So my, you know, uh, my opportunities in New York would not have been possible without the support of the Sheikh Salam Foundation because I was able to um, meet other artists like Afra and you know um, so many other incredible people in, in our cohort um, and then was supported to go to grad school and I think that that was that really spawned some um, other sub communities like Afra started Bates 15 which is a really important space for UAE based artists to you know basically just have their studios. Um, and so I think it's it's a matter of growing outwards, but I'm also constantly interested in how, I think like we use the word ecosystem a lot. And I also think about what that means. And I think it's something that should ideally be self-sustaining. Um, and so I think that education is a really huge part of that. Also like Nujum said, and I, I one of the problems that I had at teaching in the Emirates was that there, there's still, I think there's still a really big gap in terms of respecting art as a profession. And I think there's several reasons for that. Um, but I do think that there's a lot of opportunity with these new institutions that are opening up to really engage the general public. Um, and I do really mean 
the general public. I mean, who, who is building these museums, you know? Um, who is actually making up the population of the Emirates and how accessible are these spaces to them? So um, I think it's all, it's like everything is really beautifully interconnected. And I think that there's a way that we can, um, you know, even though I live here, my heart is very much in the Emirates. And so I'm constantly thinking about how um, the power of community can sort of exist beyond location. I mean, you're absolutely right, uh, Farah. And I think you'll be the first as hand saying you went to, you went to Shreifat and, uh, you know, you, you went to, to high school here. And I'm sure, you know, your uh, artistic uh, mind in, in many times was basically brought down by institutional teachers who basically said, maybe you don't have a future for this. 100%. And I think if, and if it wasn't for your resolve, you maybe wouldn't be sitting right now in a studio with a lots of colors and things behind you and, <laughs> and paintings, like you said. And I think that's something when I say that the ecosystem has to start with this, it, it has to start with this. It cannot start as you're right, it's, it's not going to start with the Louvre or it's not going to start with the Guggenheim. It's not going to start with there. This is an end result of something. This is an opportunity for both residents, locals, artists, or everybody to just come and enjoy uh, what art is all about, you know, what it means to them. And it could mean different, different things to many people. But today, us investing in our teachers, in our professors, in our curricula is what's critical today. Uh, so our young students, when they graduate, they understand what is it to be an artist, why do they want to be an artist, and what it means to be an artist. So I think we're all saying the same thing when it comes to education. And I think here in Abu Dhabi, we want to create opportunities. When I say opportunities, it doesn't necessarily mean, uh, come, let me put your artwork uh, at a gallery. No, it's an opportunity for you to have a studio, to have an affordable studio, a place, uh, if you're an artist, an opportunity not just to basically work, but to also live. You know, uh, similar to what you've seen, I'm sure, on, on a daily basis in places like New York, where artists can basically afford being in a studio and living on top of the studio and et cetera. Uh, this were things we, we didn't necessarily have in Abu Dhabi two, five years ago. So these are all things that, like the discussions like this, influence our strategy moving forward. Um, so thank you for that. Uh, and, you know, we talked about, so everybody right now is really focusing on the institutional responsibilities. Uh, Nujum or Mohammed, from your perspective, uh, what do you think are the institutional responsibilities today for the artists now? So today in, in, in the UAE, you know, what are the roles that need to basically evolve or need to change within the institutional responsibilities for the artists of today? I think uh, the many of these institutions that play important roles in the in 70s, which I mentioned when, when we found it, because and the fact, if, even with regard of of the of, uh, of the educations, uh, those people who got uh, scholarship to study abroad when they came back, we found all of us uh, there is no dedication in this field. We had only one exhibition in in, in beginning of 1980, until mid of 90s, until the Charge of Biennial established. Then we had two or three events. But many of the of the artists, we had different jobs. Some of, I was working myself in the army and other artists, like Hassan was a Ministry of Education. But the many of the artists, they founded the atelier in, in different parts of the UAE, like in Abu Dhabi, they have in Adash, in Dubai, they have in, uh, in the theater of uh, Dubai Theater, then in Charter, they have in, in Emirates Finance Society, in Ras Al Khaimah. So many of the people from the fair artists from the first generation, they played important role to teach and to collaborate with the institution. And we have a central institution which is Ministry of the Culture and Independent Institution with many activities today. Beside of group exhibition, we have one biennials, which is each, each of these institutions, they have their own activities and we have a lot of opportunity beside of this also. I think the, the institutions are playing important roles beside of, it's not only for the UAE artists, also for the artists from based here. And also today I'm talking with the, all your guys from some of them. We have been work with like with Sheikha, with other artists. A lot of, uh, now they have, they are commissioning the work for them. They are also organizing group shop for them. They have a scholarship for them to uh, join the master program and residency program. And I think all these uh, activities has been, became more and more and more in, in, in these days comparing uh, with the phenomenon in 1980. 
uh, I, I want to even to listen to the Nujum because the Nujum also is from the same time we have been working together. Father, yeah, uh, Well, uh, you ask about uh, nowadays, about today, and uh, I know that we are very nostalgic and we always want to go back to the past, but let's focus on today and the future. Uh, we've done our part in the 80s and the 90s and the, uh, you know, uh, the beginning of the new uh, 2000s until today. Uh, and um, I think we, we, there is an influence here. But uh, today the institutions, um, in my opinion, they have to work together, not against each other. They have to collaborate. Uh, we have uh, so many uh, organizations in the UAE, in Abu Dhabi, in Sharjah, in Dubai, and other Emirates. And we need uh, to bring uh, the top to the bottom, and we need to move. We need to move across the UAE. We need everyone to benefit from these initiatives. Like, you know, uh, and um, we have to, you know, to create uh, probably projects. Uh, we have to encourage uh, the, the students, we have to encourage the artists to be part of these projects. Uh, I realize that, uh, especially the new generation, uh, they don't have the, um, the habit of working on a daily basis. They don't have, you know, they are not dedicated to, to their daily practice. Uh, they always need a push. They always need uh, a project. They always need, you know, uh, they wait for things to happen for them. And I think if they have this tendency, we have to keep them job. We have to give them opportunities and jobs. You know, uh, not all the a new generation like Afra and uh, Farah and probably Sheikha. Uh, we have, you know, I, I used to work for, uh, as a trainer as well. I used to be the head of training in, uh, in the Emirates Media, for example. And I realized that they are, uh, you know, um, uh, you, need, you need to push them a lot. You need just to keep an eye on them. And uh, I don't know how you are going to do with, with this reality. This is a reality, you know, you, you, we cannot just pretend like, you know, okay, we have, we have, uh, good initiatives, we have good opportunities, but also we need to have efficient artists. We need, you know, to have great artists for our futures. Uh, and not, not after 20 years, it's, I'm talking about, about uh, after 100 years. Uh, we, we need to have extraordinary artists that can be there. Uh, like Farah in New York or other places in the world. No, I think. Can I support you on this? Hmm? I think from Ibrat Ismahuri, I think when it comes to that, I think you know I'm a, you know I'm an artist myself. Do I consider myself an extraordinary artist? Maybe I do, but <laughs> no, no. But in reality, I'm saying, you know, art. The beautiful thing about art is that everybody can be an extraordinary artist. I think what we're trying to do right now is give the opportunities for these extraordinary artists, for all of them, to basically flourish both locally and internationally. Uh, you know, some of the programs we're working on and basically at an, early, at an early stage to ensure that artists understand what galleries are looking for, to understand the value of art, for them to understand what is the perception of their art. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's always important to basically understand critique. I think many of our young artists here as Tarek said, alluded to, don't really understand the, the, the process of critique. They might take it personal, they might not like it. People never want to hear, I don't like your art, or I don't think your art is good enough. You know, people just don't like that. Uh, that's why I'm a strong believer is that, listen, art is the most beautiful thing because everybody has a view on art. You know, Nujum, you can look at my artwork and you say, this is the worst thing you've, you've ever seen. Afra can say, this is the most beautiful thing. That's what it means to me. But obviously, then you move to the commercial side of art, you know, where artists, and, and, and where art becomes a means to a, to, a, a, to a financial need. 
that is where basically you're heavily reliant on critics, you're heavily reliant on galleries. And I think, as you said, Nujum, if there isn't local opportunities to basically at least ensure that you are uh, getting all the tools within your hand to at least showcase your work, then we're not doing the job that we, we need to do. Because after we give you the tools, it's on you. That's not on us anymore. You know, after we give you, whether it's education, whether it's scholarships, whether it's opportunities, whether it is to give you artists and studios, give you studios, then that's our job to create the infrastructure for that. Then, then it's your ticket and, and, and where you go to it is up to you. And that's the way I look at things. I don't know if, it's, if this is how you guys see things, uh, Afra, Farah. Um, I mean, I, I, want, I want to ask. Yeah, uh, Sorry. I want to hear from every. I want to hear from everybody. Rock near. I mean, when it comes to this specific point, I know my guys are basically pointing and saying, "Hamad, it's nine uh, nine fifty, But I'm I'm enjoying this. So, if you guys don't have anything, anything let's keep going. Uh, Jim, you're saying something. Yeah, I I want uh, to ask. Uh, you you uh, you went to school uh, and, and here in the UAE, and uh, you went to school in the US. What was the difference in terms of education? Um, that's a very good question <laughs> because um, I studied my bachelor degree for Jamaat Zayed and I, I, I actually started um, business accounting because this was the norm. I just followed my friends. Everyone was going into business and I was like, why not? And I did business and I was getting good grades and I thought, yeah, I'm good at this. And then I realized at some point that this is not high school and I'm supposed to uh, choose a major that I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna be doing this for the rest of my life. This is not high school. I just have to finish studying um, When I realized that I changed my major anyways and I ended up in the arts. And then I, yeah, after the program, uh, the CIF, um, the Salama Emerging Artist Fellowship, uh, as uh, Farah mentioned, I also went to, Rhode Island School of Design, where I um, received my master's degree in painting. And I think it's a good question because honestly, one of the things uh, that made me come back and teach at Zaid University is because I felt like there are gaps to fit. I felt like there are uh, things that I can add. I, and, and also talking about Relative, yeah, relativeness between yeah, uh, all. The, uh, I love my faculty, whether here or in the U.S. All of them, yeah, now they're my colleagues uh, at the university. But there are moments where I, yeah, I realized that as a student, I wanted someone to relate to. I wanted someone who comes from the same background, who understands uh, my cultural issues or my societal issues or you know, socio-political issues. And, and, and I did not feel like um, they were well received or understood uh, to say the less and to respond in a critique to guide me in a, in, a, in a certain way. And so I decided to come back and this was also my way of giving back. I felt like I am responsible to come back and, and teach at Zaid University. But, um, and, and yeah, I think uh, having someone to look uh, up to, having someone to relate to is very important. Um, but I also wanted to go back to what you were saying, Nujum, in terms of like commitment and uh, sustainable practice with artists. And this is another thing that um, I talk to my students a lot about. And um, I think it's also important if we look if we look at Mithalan, New York, where Farah is, a lot of artists now and throughout history have had apprentices, had had assistants, or like they've mentored artists. And I think that this is something also going back to education. We are educating the students, but we need to also educate the parents because that's a big problem where um, I invite my students to the studio sometimes and they're not allowed to come because the, fam the, the parents don't understand what does it mean for you to go to a studio? What do you mean? And, but at the same time, I do my best when students are allowed to come. I, I, my assistant is, is a former student of mine. 
and she's working with me right now because she wants to develop to me. It's a win-win. I teach her. She learns from my practices. Her practice is similar to mine. So she learns from my tools, from my practice, um, uh, from my processes and so on. And at the same time, you know, I, I'm also head in my studio. But I think this is like, for example, when Mohammed, you asked, what could we do or what could we offer? I think in, uh, in a in a way, I mean, this is something I don't hold you responsible for, but I think as, as artists, this is a responsibility that we need to take in um, artists and teach them. But how do we do that? How do we educate the family? How do we extend that? And, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to convince a lot of my uh, friends who also went to grad school to come back and teach at Zayed, because I think still the students need a good variation of... Uh, local artists to relate to. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, you know, we've been also, I mean, we are not really uh, full-time or part-time teachers, but we've been also, uh, you know, holding uh, kind of, you know, workshops or, you know, mentorships programs for the UAE Unlimited or, um, um, you know, or visiting, you know, the portfolio reviews at the American University of Dubai or, you know, uh, but, um, one thing that we have been really trying to keep all this time was to always visit the grad, the graduate shows. And we've been really, really fascinated by the Zayed University results, what we see coming out of it. And I think um, it is among all in the UAE, this is really just a personal experience with us that it's been or what we have observed so far, um, it is really the most courageous and more free, the most free mm -hmm. approach to art and how they actually, they, uh, the artists are free to do self experiments uh, and do experiences to get challenged and to question what is art and is this art or what is the artist? And um, yeah, I, I just, because you were, you know, I you brought Zad University and the role and how it has been, um, um, you know, <laughs> art practices or the teaching is happening. Uh, this was our observation from after basically the graduate, the graduation part, not, you know, the process of it. So. Yeah, I think that's great, Hassan, because also what something that I did not mention is when I was studying at Zayed, it was the old campus. The facilities for the arts was not really, we didn't have really proper facilities because they were just classrooms that they decided to introduce an art college. And so cl normal classrooms were changed into studios. And so uh, there were challenges there, but now the new campus, uh, which opened after I graduated, have amazing facilities for the students. And I think I, I also re realized that, that when I, moved back from the US, I realized that the, the, the quality and the level of dedication and also like the level of um, uh, ideas and concepts, they were much more liberated. Um, it felt like the students were much more liberated compared to like when I was studying um, in the university. But then again, like there are, how do we maintain this? How do we sustain? Because Unfortunately, a lot of our students um, leave the university and then stop practicing. And this is something that we want to help me. At the point right after that, uh, now uh, you and I would probably see the number of students coming in and leaving and probably out of that batch, uh, let's say you had 10. And out of that batch, probably two would just remain maintaining their practice. Uh, one of the reasons would be they would look for a job to sustain themselves. Uh, but I think the, for, I've been doing a heavy research and what we're missing in the country is art institutions that are purely dedicated for, you know, like an, an art academy. So I'm, I'm talking about, uh, I've been writing down a proposal for over two years now. Uh, you know, spaces like the Bauhaus, uh, the Reichsakademie, the Whitney Museum, uh, we, we require as artists, as educators, as a space for all those who are graduating and getting into these programs, a space where they still have that uh, environment where they get immediate uh, feedback, uh, residency programs. Luckily today we have the SEEP, 
but that's just one institution now in, uh, in Abu Dhabi and they're doing a fantastic job. But we require something that is, uh, you know, born from the region and we have the facilities to, to do so. Uh, our major gap here is when, we want, when it comes to production, we tend to go to industrial areas. We need a, an in-house production, art dedicated a space where, you know, artists can come together for production. Um, so we have the CIF uh, graduates uh, and they're, they're given an amazing opportunity to go and, you know, for, the, for their further uh, education. But we also have to look at that beautiful example and see what is it missing here that our, our you know, artists to become or artists currently uh, struggling with. And I, I purely think that, yes, we have beautiful studio spaces, we have the biennials going on, the art fairs annually, but we're still missing uh, a space to make, um, aside from our studios. Um, so again, I'm, 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 I believe Farah, you study, uh, you've done the residency at the Reichs Academia. Oh, no, no. Uh, and I, no, not the Reichs Academia. I think um, you've done a residency uh, recently. I a foundation in Skowhegan, the Sco US. Sco yeah, this go again. Um, that's another beautiful example. So we require like residency to, to cater for those students who graduate uh, as another space to bridge, to bridge no, no. between, Mafum. you know, graduating Mafum. and I, and I you know, exactly for them to be, to be represented by, by a gallery, you require a lot of training. You can't just be a fresh graduate and expect uh, the quality of your work to be represented. No, I mean, like you said, I think it is, like I've been saying from the beginning, we are ever evolving very, very quickly. There are voids that this, this what do you want to call this ecosystem, there's voids that need to be filled. Uh, clearly, having an art academy, whether it's an, 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 an organic build from the ground up, organic uh, art academy that is you know, uh, born from the UEE, or is it basically in partnership with some of the other art academies from around the world? That's something that's definitely, there's a void in the market and there's a need for it. Um, I mean, we have created hints of that with music now with Berkeley, and it's literally the, the, taking baby steps. So we need to take the similar baby steps with, with uh, uh, with the art academies. I mean, we've talked right now, all of us, very thoroughly about the uh, responsibility of these institutions. I think this next part, which I think is going to be quite fun and, and is crucial, is what is your belief in the civic responsibilities of the artist? You as artist, whether it is uh, Mohammed Ghazam or Najum or Hassam or Sheikh or any of you or Farah, all of you guys believe, obviously, that art has a very loud voice. And it's made to basically tackle many aspects within our society. I mean, today, more than anything, we are seeing artists from all over the world basically having and raising their voice against inequality, against social injustice. Uh, probably Farah has seen it firsthand right outside her window. And I think we really see the power of art and the power of the voice of artists. Um, if you guys can reflect on that, um, each of you, I think it would be great. Uh, I know many of you have done uh, works uh, in the past and continue to do works today that reflect on, on, on social issues, uh, whether it is migrant workers, whether it is, uh, um, you know, like you've done Mohammed Khadam with shedding some light in, in, in the Emiratis and the migrant. Farah, you've done some fantastic work, like I said, with the Public Arts Fund. And I think more than anything, it's, it's so relevant today. Um, um, you know, Nijum as a filmmaker, you have also worked a lot. Hissam and, and the team, you guys have done a lot in this regard. So I just want to hear from you. Uh, what do you believe is your responsibility as an artist? So, uh, Father Mohammed. In the, past, the way I have been working um, and making my artwork, uh, I do not every time sit in the studio. I interact usually uh, in, the, in the social life. I am also capturing the elements which is in the place where I live, here in the UAE and trying to put all those elements in the context uh, uh, of the art, uh, uh, whatever, with using uh, new technology or using conventional tools if it is necessary. So many, uh, many of, uh, of works I have done over many years, it has a multiple meaning with using uh, 
different materials. And uh, there are a series of now, so I'm showing an in, in exhibition called in the exhibition entitled in uh, uh, infinity angles is about the light uh, how we are how i am in daily i receive the light and how this light it hits the walls in in, in the buildings in in the uae and how each building receiving the light and how this light converting to the shape again so in this case for me each house in UAE has different sound. So that meaning every city in all over the world have a different sound. This is one of the aspects I, I, I do focus in my, in my practice. Besides, I, I raise some, some issues, which is here with, in, in very narrative way through my drawings of the worker. And I do also this kind of the work with using different materials. With, I'm using, I used to use a film in the past and I used to photographed uh, the scenes uh, around of me in the city. But sometime I, I, I decided to, to extend this, this project to make them as a drawing, which I was uh, show them in, in different uh, exhibition. The last time it was in, in Abu Dhabi uh, art, where you can, you have to read it as, an, as, a, as, a, as a sentence, vertically or horizontally or different movement, the way when you move your head. So this is, it cannot be, one work when I do this kind of a work. It does. I think uh, as I mean, a, um, I think as an artist, uh, you know, our job is uh, to hope for the art and for uh, better understanding the art and uh, to um, kind of be there to kind of actively, uh, but indirectly connect to the, to the community because um, we are, we are not there to do something for the community, but we are there to do something for the art, art and um, which, it, which brings the community together. And uh, so I think that uh, our job as artists is to um, kind of, uh, you know, be able to kind of, you know, introduce and, uh, um, or make the, again, again, I think I, I go back to the very beginning, like, as I said, you know, to have that self experimentations, the self sustainability, and uh, to, to kind of introduce that aspects of living and working with the art. And um, that can bring people together. And I think that is something that artists can do with their art for the community. Shekha? Uh, you know, I would go back to dismantling your question. I feel like being an artist is not really a role. It's, it's a desire uh, to become an artist. It's, it's an expression. It's a visual language. So it's, it's a, way, a mean of communication that you can't just simply write it down. So this is where we tend to lead towards the, the visual language. So it's a language on its own. And, and I find uh, I, would, I would answer it's, it's a desire that is that that comes from within um, and and of course I agree with what uh, my friends are saying uh, it's based on day-to-day -day, you know dialogues conversations that you would like to kind of translate them in that uh, form okay thank you Farah um, yeah I, I'll probably echo Sheikha a little bit where I think that it, I mean I don't think that, I think the best reason to be an artist is that you absolutely have to, is that you wake up every day and you, it's the way that you understand the world, it's the way that you engage with the world, it's the way that you ask questions or express curiosity. Um, so for me, my, my role is just a commitment to continue doing that. Nobody sees 90% of the work that I do in my studio, most of it is idiotic. Um, but, you know, like I made a scrunchie today. <laughs> um, but I think that the, the point is, um, for me personally, as somebody who makes photographs and films, my, my, my uh, commitment is to bearing witness. And I use that word a lot because I think that um, it's just, it's important. It's the way that history is contextualized. Um, you know, it's like we, we learn the most about the past, through, not through history textbooks, but through films that were made in particular moments or photographs that were taken, paintings that were made, um, writing, you know? So I think that for me, that's my, that's my soul. 
um, concern. But, and, but, and you also, but, you can't, but you also can't hide behind the fact that also you as artists, uh, you have the opportunity through whatever art form, as you said, film, music, art, to, to, to really reflect on a important topic and, and to showcase it in a, in, a, in, a, in a way that basically maybe can't be showcased in a news article or in a, uh, in, in a room filled with polit politicians or et cetera. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think because at the end of the day, it's you're, you're sort of acknowledging letting go of, of subjectivity, you know, or, um, or sorry, of, of objectivity, basically. You're saying that this, I am the filter, I am the, I am the, um, I'm the observer, and it's impossible for me unless I'm a trained photojournalist or a trained news anchor. There will always be part of my identity that the work is being filtered through. And that's what I personally find interesting um, about art. And so anything else that, that is born out of it, you know, the sort of like connections, the community, um, to me, that's just an added bonus. But um, I have yet to meet, um, you know, anyone whose work I admired who didn't do it because they absolutely had to. Love it, absolutely. Anyone else who does it for recognition, you know, I think that their, their heart is 100% in the wrong place. I mean, you know, that's, that's what I alluded to earlier when I talk about the, the, the artists themselves. I think, you know, everybody has a, has, a, has a reason why they're an artist. Some are artists for just for the reasons from within. Some are artists, again, for commercial reasons specifically. Uh, some are artists for a specific group. Some are artists specifically for a specific cause. And the list goes on. And I think that's, again, the beauty of being an artist is that it's ever evolving. It's like water. You know, it's, 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 it's never the same. Najum, let's talk about, you know, okay. if, if your, I was, your, your, your civic responsibility. Uh, if I was asked this question 20 years earlier, I would have said uh, that, uh, you know, just like Farah said, uh, you know, it's you know, just to, to produce my artwork, you know, that's enough. But as you grow up, uh, you realize that you have to accept other roles that come along with the package. You begin to understand that you are not a hermit because you need the personal experience to grow and learn. And um, I believe today that just like politicians or other activists, artists also can uh, be catalysts of change. They can have impact on society, and culture contribute towards the, uh, the artistic growth of young generations and improve the public taste, raise awareness, uh, as I said at the beginning, and encourage critical thinking. And to go back to uh, a point you raised about you know, the, the role of art itself, I think art has become political and within the last decades, uh, it became more, uh, more radical. And when we go to school, we learn that in order to make strong films or strong artworks, we have to write strong proposals and uh, we have to increase the conflict. Uh, when we apply for funds, our proposals have to be appealing to the judges uh, who want uh, to see problems. And when we come back to our culture, our, our culture is about um, praising, not about criticizing. So we are, you know, I don't know how we are going to cope with this reality. And uh, you were talking at the, at the beginning about we need to create, you know, uh, another level of art for our, um, uh, you know, artistic organizations today for our museums, for our galleries. Um, so uh, I think we need uh, to uh, accept that art has to be free and has to be liberal. And artists, they, they, they you know, they need uh, to be uh, given the freedom to express themselves freely. Absolutely. Afra, thank you for that, Najum. Uh, Very thoughtful, thank you. Afra? I like what Najum said about um, our culture being a culture that praises, but then like we go outside and we're uh, sort of like asked to be more critical. But I think to me personally, I realized, Yanni, and this takes me back a little bit to criticism and uh, 
when I try to explain it sometimes to some of my students and I don't blame them why they feel like it's not okay to criticize something because we grew up in a culture that, um, you know, tells us to respect everyone, no matter what. Don't tell them that that's not pretty or that's not good or that's not. And it, it becomes like a, a little bit of a, an internal sort of like battle where do I tell them or do I hurt their feelings or do I not tell them? So there are tools of like how to criticize. Um, and I think that this be leads me to like, why I do it. I, I Right now, because I'm very passionate about teaching, I think that for me, it, it, again, like I, like Sheikh, what Sheikha said, it's not really a rule, it's something it's that we decided to do, like this is our life. Um, uh, I feel, sometimes I feel like it's crazy when someone asks me, are you still making? I can't not make, so I feel like my duty is to keep making and keep inspiring these younger artists and my students. And hopefully, yani, I always feel this responsibility that in starting Beit 15 as well was another one. Like I always feel like I need to be, uh, to show them something that they would aspire to become. Because if we want to create a movement, if we want to create this Yani, Nujum, what you're talking about in terms of like freedom of expression and so on. Like, if we want to create also uh, um, a community, um, an independent community that grows organically and yani, slowly um, uh, connects with uh, the government or the institutions, I think we need to be these um, examples for them to follow. I understand. I understand. Can I add something to that? I just, because sure, I, like, I think this is all really incredible. Um, but I also just want to like, just put in a reminder that, um, you know, and artists, we do what we do, but it's also a job. You know, we can't do what we do if we're not paying bills, um, if we're not raising our, ch you know, our children, if we're not um, making ends meet. And so I think that we often have these, um, you know, really, large these sort of like aerial conversations about roles of artists and, and and all of the hats that we're expected to wear as you know activists as sort of like speakers on behalf of a whole I, mean, I get I get asked all the time what's it like being an Arab woman and I'm like I don't know ask the millions of others um, so I, I think that that I I just want to say sometimes I wish that there was a little bit more care in terms of um, really thinking about who is asked to do this work and um, and I don't know, because for, for me, sometimes seeing, you know, seeing somebody do the work that they do is absolutely enough. Um, and I think that we all do hope to cultivate community as a part of it and make connections, of course. Um, but yeah, I think that, that sometimes it is also worth remembering that um, this is, the, you know, that, that for some of us, this is our livelihood uh, and that it, it, it can be, um, it, I think it becomes problematic when, when uh, the market gets involved and we start really expecting artists to perform in ways that are that go beyond their responsibilities um, okay. so yeah I just I just I like to put that in um, just as to like no, I, I think it shouldn't be I think it's it is it's an opportunity let's call it that you know some artists want to take that some artists don't but I think it shouldn't define who the artist is whether he takes the opportunity or doesn't um, so we're getting towards the end of our talk uh, I'm going to leave everybody with 60 seconds uh, and it's the million dirham question. So there's going to be like a, a drum roll attached to it because it's a, it's a question that we like to ask. Obviously, it's a, it's a million dollar question or a million dirham question because the answer could be so vast and it's basically like looking into a, a, an eight ball. We've talked about the, the uh, we've little talked about the past. I know Nujum and Mohammed didn't want to so much talk about the past, but we talked about the present and the needs of our presence. We've talked a little bit about the future, but I want us to talk a little bit more about the future. Now that we've, you have all been a part of this landscape, this artistic landscape, you know, from growing up here to being residents here, to being, uh, to be working here, uh, to be understanding our ecosystem through the last 30, 40 years. Um, if I told you, you have 60 seconds to answer. You, Totally your opinion. 
what would you like to see happening within Abu Dhabi and the UAE to support artists and art? What's missing? If there's one thing that you can put on the table right now. So everybody has, uh, has a genie on their side right now. One wish, what would it be? So it could be as everything uh, we've talked about earlier, you can reiterate that, like Najum said, more artistic freedom. Some have said more institutions, artistic institutions. I just wanna hear your 60 second segment in this regard. And if you allow me all, can we start with Tariq? Tariq, are, we, are you back? I think Tariq is not back. So we'll start with Najum, Father Najum. Um, well, uh, thank you for this question. Uh, I think uh, uh, we expect two things. Uh, um, uh, more efforts uh, to improve the, uh, the virtual uh, work uh, in, in the museums uh, because uh, this pandemic uh, raised uh, some issues related to accessibility and uh, I think uh, those who are not familiar with internet or computers or smart devices were at a, a disadvantage. And uh, the other thing, uh, I think it is very, very important if Abu Dhabi can do it, to create uh, a global uh, project that uh, you know, brings humanity together. Uh, and and you know it, it should be related to our history, our uh, our leaders, uh, uh, something related to our culture and uh, that you know the Arab identity. Uh, you know I have lots of hopes. <laughs> I cannot stop. Uh, yeah, I'm a fool. Uh, the good news is, is I think there's a lot happening, uh, specifically in this regard, whether it is. At a large scale, you know, uh, the Sheikh Zayed National Museum, which is a museum that will basically tell the world and tell ourselves about our great history and our, our great land and our stories. And it's going to be a live museum that we don't not just celebrate our history, we celebrate our present and our future through our intangible history, through our artisans, through our music, through our different art forms. So, and there's many things more to come. I think, Nujum, you as a filmmaker, you have seen firsthand the last five years, the amount of content and the flexibility and content that's coming out of this, this part of the world, and specifically here out of the UAE, giving art uh, uh, actors, directors, producers, the opportunity to, to, to really have a voice in this regard. So, but I think a lot more has to happen and I think I take that into account. Tarek, uh, I think I you're- hope, I hope that we are going to have some of the uh, film festivals coming back because uh, that Inshallah. was an achievement. That was an achievement and I think we should cling to our achievements. We shouldn't Absolutely. let go of them. Absolutely. I think uh, if I was, uh, you know, harnessing the voice of, of Robin Williams as the genie, your wish is my command. <laughs> so Tarek, go Thank ahead. You. Yes, oh, hi. Wow, that's the good news. I'm, I'm back here, yeah, sorry. Um, tough question you're asking. I think perhaps probably most basic thing I'd like to see the aura of around the arts. I think Farah talked about it a little bit. It's just, it's, it's a job, it's, it's work that we do. And I think we've gone from not giving it importance to giving the arts too much importance, I think it's equally dangerous somehow. So I think I'd like to see the aura and the mystique sort of stripped out and it, education on a, on a very elementary level from schools even, it's, it's pushed. And so it's, people grow up with art around them that it, it doesn't have this aura, let's say. I mean, you're absolutely right. I think we, I've been in many, uh, many instances, whether it's in, through our art exhibitions or through our museums, and I've seen this aura you're talking about. Uh, it, you know, I've seen our kids, uh, even our adults, go to our museums and feel like, I don't want to go back there again. I don't want to go back to an art exhibition because there is this, this fear as maybe I won't look as smart as if I don't understand what I'm looking at, or I don't know who's the artist. Or I, don't, I think you're absolutely right in saying so that no, we should at a very early stage help people understand that art is for everybody and art is subjective. There's no harm for you saying this is good, bad or ugly. Uh, and I think uplifting the entire curricula uh, from, from uh, 
primary school to secondary school to even university. And I think people like yourself, Tariq, and people like, uh, like Afra and Sheikha who are in these education institutions have to play a major role in basically uh, help creating these curricula and creating these programs within our educational systems to, 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 to break through this barrier. Uh, who do we have next, Farah? Um, oh boy, uh, my wish is for greater freedom of speech and expression and for the um, incredible resources that we have to be extended to um, everybody, really, because we have a really incredibly diverse population and I think, um, you know, this country is really very much a group effort. And so my, that, would be, that would be my wish. No, I mean, you're absolutely right. And I think uh, this is what I think, you, you know, we've heard from, uh, from uh, Ramin and Rukni and Hissam, you know, coming to the UAE 11 years ago, and that played a huge part of their artistic uh, view on what they're, they're working on today. I think the beauty of the UAE and, and Abu Dhabi is it is, it is a, a, a melting pot of different cultures, different ideas, uh, different expressions, and I think this is a it's, it's a beautiful opportunity to create expression through art. Um, you know, one thing here in Abu Dhabi is we are seeing, and we're moving towards seeing artists as artists, regardless where you're from, regardless uh, what you bring to the table, and giving you equal opportunities. Uh, you know, sp you know, specifically if you, especially if you're living here in, in, in Abu Dhabi, I think that's a start. I think once we move towards that, then you basically take it a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger. But, but I agree with you 100%, let's create opportunities for all, uh, and equal opportunities for all within our uh, ecosystem. Afra? That's a very tough question. <laughs> now, that's why it's the million dollar question. <laughs> Are you gonna give it out? Uh, I went to <laughs> maybe, high school. Huh? I told you, I'm, uh, <laughs> maybe. Um, <laughs> I wish to, um, what do I, I wish for? I wish for maybe I've been I've been dreaming about this for unutilized buildings in Abu Dhabi or abandoned buildings in Abu Dhabi to be leased to artists to run independently. I love that idea. At an affordable price. <laughs> no, no, you're absolutely right. I mean, we talked about this, and I think uh, earlier. When we talk about, like I said, we've used the word many times now, this ecosystem, it has to fit the entire spectrum of what we're talking about. You can't basically give an artist an, uh, you know, an opportunity, like a, an artist in residence, give him a studio, but at the same time, tell him you need to rent an apartment for 500,000 dirhams, it's just not gonna work, uh, you know? So you need to have the entire system that works on it. Like you said, we can't expect that basically your studios have to be an hour away from the city. You know, that yeah. you need to commute an hour away just so you can get affordable studios. That is the job on us building the relevant infrastructure for that. But I think your idea is a fantastic idea in, 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 in utilizing the infrastructure that's available right now. Uh, and I don't think, you know, I might be speaking out of hand right here. Uh, when you said make it affordable, I don't think it should be affordable. I think it should be free. Wow. So, uh, that's very generous. But I also think that artists need to feel the responsibility that they do have to take care of yani there's it becomes a little bit problematic yani <laughs> no, no, you, you know, you know, what i mean is that <laughs> we will we can offer this and in, yeah. in, 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 in return the artists themselves will know if they're working in the studio and their artist is getting out there and people are talking about it then obviously you're doing something right if it's not then you know maybe you need to take a step away give the opportunity to somebody else and we, we should create some sort of revolving system to give opportunity for all but i think i love this idea Afra. i'm definitely going to look into it thank you um uh, I think I do agree with all about uh, the, the studio because I had a studio where I used to pay the rent for that and it was really, really not affordable. Then there are certain rules where we cannot follow. I mean, even they offered me in some institution that to, to, to pay the same rent to have to, to work there. But, but artists, they need to really to be free to, to enter and leave the studio because you cannot keep it looks like a shop, actually. This is a... Then, Many, then it it's, it need to be a, a, a reasonable with, with, with the cost. I mean, really, most of us we we cannot offer them. So that so that's why I, I, I moved from my uh, my old studio to the I built a studio actually to be to work in the night or morning or any time I can I, I can be there or I, I can receive any numbers of the people where 
uh, I can uh, make an environment to have uh, this dialogue like we had it in the past in Hassan House, for example. Right. So most of the co communication with all these literatures and writers and filmmakers and everyone, it was in that a small house. So we, we built, it, it's all this impact of all this dialogue it came in our practice. I think it's very important to have something like this. I think, Mohammed, يعني دائما نحن نرجع للوادي المؤسس آه لما هو اسس آه دوله الامارات من اول ما اسسه هو اسس المجمع الثقافي واحنا كنا نعرف المؤسسه المجمع الثقافي هي كانت فرصه لكل الفنانين يتجمعون في مكان واحد ونحن بعد ما ردنا ردينا افتتاحه نبغى نرد الفرصه هاي want to we need to bring back this opportunity so you know we do have our, our studios that are offered to artists uh, free of charge we have our film studios that are offered there i think we do a lot more from that uh, Mohammed, whenever you're down in abu dhabi you have a home in Mujamma al-thaqafi or any of our assets thank you thank you so much uh, hisam and the team there um we we are very happy when afro mentioned that because uh, it also bring us back to our very first point when we brought up the flying house as a self-run and self-sustaining space. Um, and so that was a great, uh, you know, um, idea. And also the second one was um, what you're doing now. I mean, the, the voice are having an artist, uh, the, the artists are having, not the voice are having an artist, the artists are having a voice. And if that voice could be given even more and more in different um, fields and um, different parts decision of the community, decision-making on, they could, I mean, this is, I think this is, uh, this is normal in museums all around the world that the artists are sitting on, uh, you know, boards of the museums, on boards of institutions, the, you know, the schools, institutions, and um, so what you're doing now, I think this is this has been a very very great start, and um, so thank you for that. No, thank you for that. And you're absolutely right. I think you know we need to create at a, at a high level from a strategic perspective is whether it's an advisory board, whether it's a board that sits side by side with institutions like our institution at the Department of Culture and Tourism, where they can they can play an integral role in determining our strategy hand in hand. But I think it's, it, I think it's a fantastic idea. Uh, well, my dream um, is a dreamer's dream. Um, we all dream. I mean, all, all, all my colleagues here put down their ideas and I agree with uh, each one of them. Uh, but I also respect and appreciate what our country is doing with all the institutions and in a very short amount of time. Uh, you said, uh, you know, it's a seed and it's been growing and we all witnessed that today, um, but it requires patience. So I second uh, everyone's voice and it just requires patience. And we all know the museums that are about to open in the near future. And I think we're advancing slowly. Um, and I'm happy to see that uh, we're going in a slow pace because rapid as well is not too healthy. Um, and yeah. Um, I mean, that's. that's I mean, you're you're, uh, you're getting off quite easy. Right? There was no uh, wish there. <laughs> I think I second, for example, what Tarek is saying. I mean, I only studied art in an, at a university level. Um, so for me to come in an art school and given a big book of history of Western art uh, was a little bit, you know, hard to digest first year. So I think our curriculum in, you know, in and in primary elementary schools should extremely change and it should be given an equal attention just like any other subject. And I think if we can change the mindset of the younger generation before getting into higher education, um, we would notice a major difference. Absolutely. Well, thank you all. This has been inspirational. It's been fruitful. Uh, I want to do this again. I can assure you that this is not coming in one year and coming out of another. Uh, you know, your voices are heard. Uh, you will see action. Uh, and I said, we will do a lot more of these. Inshallah, the next time we do this, we'll be all sitting together discussing these things. Uh, but some fantastic insights. Thank you all for your time. Again, be safe, uh, be healthy, and be happy. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night.
Thank you. Good night, everyone.